Okay, just getting ready to um, get over to my place. Uh, we've got snow and mud to the point where the last five miles I'm probably not even going to be able to get in with a truck, even a four-wheel drive. So I'm going to take the bicycle and trailer. Uh, and the reason I've got to get over this weekend is I've got some beehives up there and if I don't keep feeding them, they're going to starve out with this nasty weather we got. I'm so sick of the snow and the rain. So, this is a hard slog dragging the bike and trailer up over this range. I'm just going past one of my friend's places. And, uh, yeah, I've still got a long way to go. It hasn't started going downhill yet. <laughs> One of the faithful dogs with me on this trip. And here's the other one. They're having a ball. It's one hour and I've got to where I was hoping to actually get to in the first place with my Corolla. So yeah, it's gonna be a long day. So I'm almost to the top of the range, to the pass, and uh, this is one of my least favorite pieces of road because it's muddy, it's very steep, and uh, you can easily slide off into that rutted ditch on the left there. So it doesn't matter whether you've got four-wheel drive or two-wheel drive or whatever. It's muddy, it's slippery, um, and that trench is deep enough that it'll bottom you out. So good thing I'm on the push bike today. They do good. I think they're still having fun. But I think all of us will be happy to get to my place in a nice warm fire. soaked to the bone. Uh, you know, this is my, my woolen um, jacket. Uh, Howard Green is what we used to call him. Um, and even though I'm wet, uh, you know, it's keeping me warm, moderately, you know, warm enough anyway. Uh, it's a mixture of rain and snow today, but it's pretty nasty. Okay, so I'm at that 
last mile, whatever it is, it's about a mile, went pretty quickly because I had some flat ground and some downward slope. So I was jumping off and I was pushing a bit, but then I was able to sort of roll down some of the other stuff and it made it pretty quick. So 20 minutes took me to do a mile there. So about walking pace, which is not too bad. Considering the conditions, this, I'm just about to go down through some, through some rocky stuff, but this mud up here, when it's like this, you know, in springtime, uh, when it's when it's muddy, when it's not frozen or uh, dry, it is terrible country to have to travel through, even on foot. You know, you'll be sinking down in the mud, the mud will be sticking to your tires and your feet, so... Uh, as a crow flies, I think I'm two miles from my place, a little bit more than that, um, by the roads I have to take, but uh, we'll see how it goes. And this is why I didn't want to bring any sort of motorized vehicle in here, it's mud. It's just nasty. If I can push through this, uh, probably still about half a mile, I might be able to step off the trail and go on some grass for a bit. Um, but then I can get up into the uh, hilly, rocky parts again. So, dogs are a bit happier. They finally got to trot along a bit. Oh, if you ever do take your dogs with you, you know, when you're riding the bike, you know, there's a couple of times there I could have, you know, really screamed down the hill, but I just kept the pace to a, a nice roll where they were just kind of, they weren't running, they were just kind of trotting beside me. And, uh, you know, they can do that all day. She's eating grass now. But um, if you, especially on a hot day, if you were to make them run full out to keep up with you, um, that can hurt your dog. Okay, so the last couple of hours, last mile, have been terrible. Um, I'm now about three quarters of a mile from my place. And I had to disconnect the trailer from the bike and just move them separately, and, you know, walking back and forth. Because um, the mud was just killing me. It's sort of just sticky and thick and it just jams up everything that's moving in the bikes. Um, so, yep, ended up using the trailer as a handcart, which it actually works really good for, so, anyway, so now I'm going to finish with the lowlands, and I get to go up high again, which should keep me out of this nasty mud. That star picket fence post. At the top of the hill is my property. Yay! So, yesterday afternoon, um, I didn't film this because honestly I was just that tired. But um, I got to within half a mile of the um, of my off-grid homestead. And um, the, the gears, just because of the mud, the gears and chain in my bike, I was using, just uh, jammed up, <coughs> excuse me, just jammed up solid, so I couldn't, uh, couldn't even keep going with that, so all I did was uh, disconnect it, and um, I kept on going with the trailer as a hand cart, which worked okay, it was still a lot of work. The ground is just so soft from the rain at the moment, it's very hard to move, no matter what you're in. Uh, I'm glad I didn't try bringing a vehicle out here. Uh, I've been out here before when it was like this, actually not even as bad as this, and I was getting stuck in two-wheel drive motorcycle and four-wheel drive, uh, you know, four-wheelers. Uh, once the once the mud gets like this, it's, uh, it's terrible country to be in. So, anyway. So what I did... Like I said, half mile from my place, and 
and uh, I just dumped the bike. I cashed it. It's sitting here. I'll get back in a week or two, get it picked up and move to my place. Um, there's not enough people around here. I don't think it's going to get found. Uh, there's Jess. And uh, I changed out to my one of the bikes I had at my home set. And um, I try and get back to my car as quickly as possible with this. And uh, there's Blackie. Yep. Um, which I guess if you know if you're looking at a, at a bicycle. out or whatever you're looking at uh, it's pretty handy that you can inexpensively buy a couple of bikes and just change them out as you need to so in that respect you know my bicycle bug out quotation marks worked pretty good um, I'll do a summary on this once I get home but uh, yeah it took me a long time a lot longer than I was expecting to to get up to my place, uh, the original mission was to feed my bees, uh, which are in a very remote location, and I couldn't have got here with a vehicle of any sort, uh, maybe a snowmobile, maybe, um, or some other sort of track vehicle, but anyway, the, the mission was accomplished, I fed my bees, they're good for another week or two, and hopefully by that time the roads out here will have dried up some. And um, I can get back and sort this out. Uh, trailer did pretty good. I've got a few modifications I'd like to make. i tell you what I'm not. Uh, what I was going to do is motorize it. And after having to push and struggle with this thing through the mud and the sagebrush, I'm not even worried about trying to motorize anymore. If if you're in a position that you need to move through very hard country, I think keep it as simple as possible. Uh, to the point, you know, I might even take the gears off the bike that I'm using for the trailer. Um, yeah, I mean a flat tire, <coughs> excuse me again, a uh, flat tire I could deal with, but uh, the chain jamming or braking because of all the mud and sagebrush and other stuff, you know, if, if you're talking about a bug out and you're getting out of somewhere quickly in an emergency and half the time you're going to be pushing the bike anyway, you might as well go with simplicity, get rid of the, get rid of the gearing system. So what I might do for this bike, I might actually just either get rid of the gearing or maybe change it back to just one either front or rear derailleur, a front or rear uh, sprockets, so that uh, hopefully I don't have the trouble with it. So what the cha what the chain did, it it, it uh, popped off the sprockets and jammed in between front area and the rear area for that matter. So for a while there I was able to push it and then it jammed in the rear. So anyway, I've got some plans to make some things change. Anyway, uh, so I've lightened up. I dropped off everything I needed to do. So I had, uh, I think I had 40 pounds of sugar that I was hauling in that last haul up to my place. And I dropped that off. Now we just want to get now we just want to get out of here as quickly as possible without getting stuck. So I'm down to a mountain bike, backpack, and a couple of dogs. So off we go. Okay, so this is pretty close to my this is within flying distance of my place from my bees. And lots of these little purple flowers, that's probably some sort of weird, but uh, lots of flowers out at the moment. And I uh, want my bees the best chance to make the most of it. Some of my tracks from yesterday. Oh, it was horrible. Said the mud 
and just stuck the wheels and made everything difficult. Okay, this is a lot easier than it was yesterday. Uh, the mud is still sticking to the tyres a little bit. Uh, I'm just pushing it through this area. Hopefully once I get through this area, I'm not going to have to worry about it. But uh, every once in a while I'll stop and I'll just clean off the worst parts of the mud from the tyre. And I'm making reasonably good progress. Probably about walking speed. Much better than yesterday. So did you two have an adventure? Yeah. I'm having an adventure. Alright, one hour since I left my place on the way back. And... Uh, yeah, uh, done a couple miles I think. So um, now I'm getting up in the mountains again, and uh, hopefully things will start going real quick from now. All right, I think I'm now officially at the top of the pass on my way back out. Dog's doing all right. Jess got a little bit too much light on her, but she's still doing good. So, uh, to my vehicle to get out of here, I think I've got three miles, it's all downhill, it's all got rock or compacted earth, I've got no reason to believe I'm going to have trouble with uh, uh, mud like I did over the other side, so if I wanted to I could probably tear down the hill at 35 mile an hour, well, maybe 30 mile an hour. Um, but I need to keep it to a pace that the puppy dogs can handle, you know, they can, I think they can run at about 35 mile an hour, but they can't do it very long, but, uh, if I keep it to about 5 mile an hour, um, I'll have it easy and they'll just be trotting along. So, that's a consideration if you have pets. Got to press the thing there. So I just stopped a bit of a puddle on the road. I thought the uh, dogs would enjoy a break. We've just been slowly going down the hill. You know, they've been trotting. Blackie's not having too much trouble. Jess, my chubby bum, bitch, is um, she's still pretty good. But... So we'll just keep on rolling down the hill at a good pace. And, uh, yeah. Whoa. Need to get a GoPro. So the dogs are at a nice trot, but they're not running full on. Alright, I've got to pay attention to the road. See if I can get another action shot here. Stopped it to give the dogs a break. Once again, Blackie's doing pretty good. Jess is a little out of breath. But anyway, I'm not taking them too far, stopping regularly. Uh, now, if this was summer and there wasn't ready sources of water available, I'd actually be carrying water and I'd stop and give them a drink on regular occasions. So, this is a pretty easy section for me. Except for going through this mud hole with one hand. Eek.
stop down the bottom there, give them another break. But pretty much, I could roll all the way down the hill to town from here, almost all the way. So, although I had to work and push my way up the hill yesterday, uh, I'm gaining the reward of that now is that I get to go back down. Someone's been up here in a truck. sure this uh, isn't going to show up real well on the see my car there but anyway oh mud puddle deep mud puddle means my feet got wet Bugger. Okay, I'm about to get loaded up. Get out of here. Jess is ready to go. six miles I still had all that mud and muck in the bottom valley area over the other side of the mountain to deal with uh, like I did yesterday and that slowed me up quite a lot but it wasn't too bad and I had the dogs with me so I had to when I got to go down the hill and actually enjoy a bit of downhill uh, cycling I had to go a bit slower for them so uh, all in all not too bad um, for the 
crackers and things that you might be used to thinking about using the bicycle as a bug out vehicle or whatever else. Um, I think it's a fantastic tool. I think we need to um, realise what our limitations are. Um, I'm getting close to 50 and my first bug out on a bicycle practice on a bicycle was when I was 21 and I rode uh, 20 miles up the mountain and hiked for several miles after that and buried a cache of um, food and tools just in case. Um, I don't know if I could do that today. Uh, so what I did yesterday with the pushing the bike and trailer up this hill and then dealing with all that mud and muck in the valley, I think that was about the limit to my stopping regularly to try and catch my breath. Uh, we're about six, seven thousand feet up here. So um, that's something else to think about. Um, I'll try and, when I get home, I'll try and sit down and think, and say anything else I need to say before I put this video up. But um, if you're a prepper and you're thinking about using a bicycle, self-fit and keep testing the levels of your fitness because um, I'm sorry I expect it what time was it uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4 it took me 6 hours yesterday to go 6 or 7 miles um, yes I was carrying a lot of heavy pack yes the conditions were terrible you know, with the snow and 